This is a set of data. Um, it's a bunch of numbers that represent how many times a bunch of different people saw the doctor. Okay? These numbers represent the number of times that a bunch of different people, each one of these represents a single person, how many times they saw the doctor. Just have a look at the numbers with me for a moment. Okay? Um, you might notice there are a few really healthy people. Who are those people? Zeros. The zeros, thank you very much. They haven't been to the doctor at all. Um, there's sort of a lot of people who over the last, whatever you call it, say it's a month, have had to see the doctor twice. That seems to have happened quite a lot. Um, there's one person who's a lot more sick than the rest of them. Who's that? Eight. There's an eight, just one of them, right there, sort of near the middle. Okay. So you've noticed a few things in the data. The most important thing I want you to notice is it's really kind of a discombobulated mess. There's no order to it whatsoever. It's just kind of, I don't know, maybe it's in alphabetical order, but that order is not very useful for me in trying to understand this situation. Okay? So the heading you made was, tell me again. Analyzing, Analyzing frequency, frequency tables. What we're going to do is create a frequency table out of this, which as you're going to see is a much more orderly way of doing this. So um, in your spreadsheet, here's what I'd like you to do up the top. We're going to do um, a couple of columns first. So the first one is, um, what did I say this data was about? What did I say the numbers represented? The number of times they went to the doctor. People went to the doctor. So let's call these uh, doctor visits. Okay. And for reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm going to ask you to put on X at the end. That'll be the number. Okay. After that, in your first column, my second column, because this is a frequency table, my second column is going to be. Frequency. So this means um, how many times has that particular thing happened? How frequently, right? So I'm going to say frequency. I'm going to call that F. Okay. So doctor visits and frequency. I'm going to have another column in a second, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Now uh, coming back to this guy here, this random set of data. Um, I didn't just come. I didn't just make this up. I actually came up with it from your textbook, which is where I'd like you to look now. If you go to uh, 705 in your in the section on uh, statistical analysis, investigate that. This is the table that you should see in front of you. Okay, so I'll give you a second to catch up to there. Um, I don't know what page of the PDF it is. Let's see if I can. 29, page 29 of that particular chapter. Okay, so I want you to have a look at this frequency table and see how it represents that mismatch, that mishmash of different numbers that I had before. Okay, who are those healthy people again? Up the top, you can see there's five of them, right? Can you see our very sadly unhealthy person? Down here, there's eight, right? Um, question, what happened to these rows? Why is it like zero, one, two, three, everything's nice, and then there's nothing? And then, hey, what happened there? Why do you think there's this big gap? Because there's nothing, there's no numbers that represent that. Very good, yeah. So you guys don't have this in your textbook because I sort of made it up off the base of the table, but look, there are no fives. No sixes, no sevens. You following me so far? So since I don't have any of those, I don't feel the need to include them as a row in my table, like so. Okay. Um, last thing I'll point out is, did you remember how I said, wow, there's a lot of twos, right? And you can see exactly how many twos there are. That means that two is what? It has a special name. It's called the... Starts with the name. Right. The mode. I suppose saying that it starts with the name is not very helpful, because most of the words that we're going to use today may start with an M. Okay? But that's the mode. It's the most common one. Now here's what I'd like us to do. We've already got these numbers here. In your spreadsheet, which looks currently like this, doctor visits and then frequency. Um, what I'd love us to do is to, for now, this is the sort of manual part, I'd like us to take those numbers from the textbook and let's just input them. After we've inputted them, then we can actually do something with them. Okay. So go ahead, take those numbers and chuck them into your spreadsheet. I'll just take a second to... Okay, can you just give me a quick thumbs up um, if and when, and I expect it will all be different times for everyone, you've got all of those numbers in there. Just give me a quick thumbs up. When you get there, yep, about half of us, cool. That's right, keep going until you're ready. I'm just watching until you give me a thumbs up. Yep, thank you. Good, yep. Okay, maybe just a few more. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, now what we're going to do here is use this frequency table to work out a few things, okay? So the first thing we've already actually worked out was the mode. What was it again? 
two. It was two, very good. So maybe what we want to do is just um, leave a few rows down underneath your table. I'm just going to write mode equals two. Um, I'm doing that just so you don't also have to have a book on the table at the same time. Eventually we're going to write this in our books, but for now, just write that, we've already calculated it. The mode is of course the most frequent thing, so we can just read that off the table, okay? And hopefully we all agree that reading it off the frequency table is a lot more efficient than doing it here. Thumbs up? Yeah? Okay, fantastic. Now, the next thing I want us to do is our mode is just one of the measures of the center of the data, right? We have two other ways to measure what's sort of the, the center of this group. What are they? They both also start with M. We've got the median, which is, what's that mean again? Median? It's the middle score, we'll come to that in a second. What's the other one that starts with M? It's the mean, which is another word for average. average. Fantastic. Okay, now have a look at my data here. If I just gave you this without giving you the table, right? What would you do to calculate the mean, the average, of this? What would you do? Yeah, go ahead. Mitch. Add all the numbers together and divide by how many, however many there are. Very good. So I just go plus, 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 plus. This would take quite some time because there are so many values here. And then after you've added, you divide by however many there are. Okay. However, because we have this in a frequency table, this is tons easier. For starters, okay? um, underneath where you've got frequency, what I'd like you to do is press equals. Now, in Excel and in any kind of um, other spreadsheet software, some of you know this, but others of you have never done this before, the equals indicates, hey, computer, I want you to go calculate some stuff right now. I want you to solve this um, expression I'm going to give you. Here's what I'd like you to write. S U M. If you type that in, if you've got a pretty normal spreadsheet piece of software, can I get a show of hands, by the way? Who is actually using Excel? Hands up. Oh, pretty much ever. Okay, who's using something different? I'm using sheets. Sheets, anyone else? Okay, using sheets. It should say the same thing though, right? It recognizes, oh, you want to do a thing, right? Um, open a bracket, so I've got a, um, a bracket here, equals sum, and then what I'm going to do is, watch carefully, just watch up on the screen for a second, see if you can see my mouse cursor, right? What I'm going to do is, I want to add up all of the people in my group, right? So I'm going to use my mouse, watch carefully, and I'm going to highlight all of these guys. Okay, now before you press anything else, have a look at what it's done. Okay. Um, I picked all of these guys because if I add them up, there's five people who were really healthy, there's our one who we said obviously something is going on, there's these 14. I'm just adding up all of them, right? What do you see down here? What does B2 indicate? Yeah, Jessica. It's the coordinate of where the numbers are. Fantastic, that's exactly the right way to say it, actually. The coordinates of where the numbers are. B is a column, two is your row, and then B7, of course. Same column, but it's it's lower down. It's the seventh row. Okay, um, because we started a bracket. When you start a bracket, you have to close. end your bracket. You have to close it. So let's close that. And um, it's ready to go now. If I press enter, and if you press enter, it should tell me without us having to count manually. Because why do that when you get a computer to do it? It should tell you exactly how many people there are. Okay, very good. Now come over a little bit. I actually don't need that background anymore. Over to the third column, you might have seen from the text, the third column has a name. Um, it's called, what's the name of the third column? FM. FM. It's very good. So we can uh, write that as the top of our third column. That title? Okay. Now, if we wanted to do the mean, right, let's just go back to the data. Okay? As Anush said, we would have to add all these guys up, and we have to divide by how many scores we've got. By the way, we now know how many scores there are. There are... The, the computer calculated for us, right? There are 34. There it is. There's the, there's the total number. So I'll divide by that in a second. But before I do that, I've got to work out what all of these are equal to. Now, we've already agreed it would take a long time to just go plus, 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 plus. So instead of doing that, I'll say, you know those twos, right? How many twos are there again? 14. There are 14. So if I just took all the twos and added them up, that would be equal to? 28. 28. And humor me. Where did you get 28? Wrong. 14 times 2. 14 times 2. 14 lots of 2, right? When you come to your table, in other words, press an equals sign for me next to your 14. Equals. It's that 14 there. I'm just going to click on that. 14. And there's no times button on my keyboard, but the substitute for that is the asterisk. So if you press shift 8 on your keyboard, that'll give you an asterisk. That's multiplication. Um, it's 14 times 2, right? This number over here. How does that look? Can you give me a thumbs up? That looks alright on yours? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, thank you. So if I press enter, voila, it gives me the number that you guys calculated before. Okay. Now, 
Watch carefully for this step again. Eyes up for a second. Eyes up. See what I've put in there, that 28, right? If you double click on your 28, you'll find it's not really a number. It's a formula. It's calculating things for you. Okay. So what I can do is I can take that formula, 28, right there. I'm going to copy it. You'll know you copied it if it's got those ants running around. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, I'll do this part slowly so you can see what I'm doing. I've highlighted this entire third column. I've highlighted all the cells there. And instead of like typing in every formula, I'm now just going to paste in one here. I've copied that one formula. Press Control V to paste. And now, hopefully, it's calculated everything. Do you have the same numbers yep. that I do? 0, 6, 28, 9, 20, and then 8, right down the bottom. Okay. So if you're like, wait, what just happened there? I'll just repeat it. I took this one cell, this one here. Um, we had written a formula into there. I copied that formula, and then I pasted it into every cell within that column. How are we doing so far? Yep. Is there anyone who's like, I'm completely lost? Yeah, okay. Can you enjoy have a look over? Because if your spreadsheet's okay, then we should be able to make David's look okay as well. 